Hello and welcome to Mellow Labs. On today's episode, I'm solving a problem. I drink a lot of tea, but sometimes I make tea and because of my ADHD, I forget that I have tea. So my tea goes cold and I really don't like cold tea. So on today's episode, we're making a mug warmer. Some of you will remember that on one of my live streams I disassembled a 3D printer and that's where I got this hotbed from. The idea is that I have this hot plate, I plug it into power, I put my tea on it and it warms up my tea. I have no idea if this is an effective way of heating my tea, so let's do some science. The only difference between screwing around and science is writing it down. Let's start by writing down the temperature of the tea which is currently 21 degrees. Now let's connect the uh, heater to power. I'm going to give it 24 volts because that's what the printer used to run on. Let's see how long it takes to heat up. Okay, so it's been five minutes. The hot plate is at 73 degrees. The tea is at 24 degrees. I hope this isn't melting my desk. I'm gonna put something under that sacrificial book. 27 degrees, is that a decent temperature? That is absolutely still cold, okay. So it's been a little while and I think the tea is now at a drinkable temperature. It's at 45 degrees, which is pretty decent. Let's have a sip. Yeah, that's that's good temperature. I'd probably prefer it around 50, but I'm gonna stop the experiment at 45. The plate itself is at uh, 135, so not the greatest heat transfer, but I think some of that is due to the fact that there's a lot of metal here that's just expanding the, the heat that we don't really need. So I'm probably gonna end up just like cutting this bit down just enough to like hold the mug and whatever mounting method I end up using for it. It did in fact melt some of the book. Okay, I'm gonna go formulate a plan and I'll see you in a... After way too many brain cycles, I think I have an idea. I'm gonna take my mug and I'm gonna put it on the heat plate. Now, first thing we need to do is figure out whether the mug is on the heat plate. I did consider having like limit switches or load cells here, but instead I'm just gonna have an IR distance sensor right there. It's just gonna tell me if mug or no mug. And that is going to trigger a contactless temperature sensor, which is gonna tell me the temperature of the mug. And obviously that's going to feed back to some kind of like micro controller, probably an ESP32. And when the tea is too cold, it's going to click on a relay, which will turn on the, the heated bed and it will warm it up. But then I was thinking, what if my tea gets too hot? What if I then need to cool it down? I decided that I'm gonna put a fan right above my mug that's gonna cool it down if the tea is too hot. And again, that's gonna be controlled by some kind of relay. Let me add some blue squiggles to show that it's cooling. Some of these parts are really expensive, so uh, I'm gonna email DF Robot and see if they wanna support my channel in exchange for exposure. I doubt it, but you know, I'll shoot my shot. I didn't think it would happen. I didn't even lie to them. I, I told them what this project was and they were like, yeah, sure, here's some stuff. Fun fact, DF Robot didn't pay me to make this video. You know who did? Nobody, apart from my Patreon supporters. If you have a few extra quid a month, I would greatly appreciate you support me on Patreon. You get early access to my videos, work in progress updates, and tons of exclusive content. So if you could, I would absolutely adore you and uh, enjoy the rest of the video. Goodbye. First of all, we've got the brand new Fire Beetle, which they mentioned just came out, but I didn't know they were gonna send it to me. Uh, we've got an ESP32, this one I asked for. Uh, we have a Relay Beetle ESP32. Oh, so this is like a small beetle and a big beetle. So they sent me three ESPs, only one of them I asked for. I ain't gonna complain. A thermal sensor and another Relay. So this is the Beetle and this is the Fire Beetle. I don't know what makes them special. I know they're the new generation of ESPs. I should probably use one of these in this project, but that would mean I have to program it in C++. I'll try, but no promises. There's my little no contact thermometer, and here are my two little relays. So now that I have all the electronics, I can put it together and see if it actually works. So I've got everything laid out here, and you might have noticed that I'm using an Arduino Uno. Well, that's because the uh, the library for the uh, temperature sensor is not updated to, to support these yet. 
but they're working on it. I emailed them about it and they're literally, as we speak, working on an update. So I will eventually switch to one of these, but for now, I'm doing all the prototyping on an Arduino Uno, which does mean I had to program the whole thing in C++. Yay me! I learned a new language. It actually wasn't that difficult. I think I was just being really stubborn not wanting to learn it. Now that everything works the way I intend it to work, I'm gonna go design a case and then put all the stuff into the case and deal with integration hell. Uh, see you on the other side of the integration hell montage. I didn't like the montage I made for this video, so instead I'm gonna show you how I put it together by taking it apart. It's just like watching one of my live streams, Monday at 6 p.m. Let's go over how it works. First of all, you put the mug down, the IR sensor detects that there is a mug there and it turns on the temperature sensor, it checks the temperature of the mug and then if it's too cold, it turns on the heater and if it's too warm, it turns on the fan, that cools it down. I actually did an extensive test of this heater compared to a control mug sitting next to it and I tracked the temperature of both of them and it worked exactly as I expected. The mug on the uh, heater cooler device, it first of all cooled down much quicker because of the fan blowing on it, getting it to the right temperature and then it stayed at a warm temperature for the entire five hour long period that I tested it for and the control mag obviously, you know, just, just curved down. Uh, so it actually works really, really well. And now let's go over how I put it together. Let me start by showing you how I mounted the bed. I'm gonna need some pliers because it was just warming up my tea, so it's still very hot, but I can just pull it out. The bed is held in place by these rubber spacers, the exact same ones you buy for a 3D printer when you wanna swap out your springs. And I'm mostly using these for thermal isolation. I want as little heat coming down from this plate to the 3D print because it will melt. I did accidentally test this by pushing a firmware update that didn't have the uh, temperature cutoff for the bed enabled. So it got to like 160 degrees and none of the plastic melted. So these are actually working. Originally, when I was planning out the case for this, I was gonna put all of the electronics underneath the bed and that would be terrible for two reasons. One of them, the thermals, it would be really hot under there. Second of all, if I spilled any of my tea on it, it would fry all of the electronics. So instead, I just opted for having the least plastic there as possible, just enough to hold the bed in place. And I can confirm after spilling some tea on this accidentally, it is super easy to clean. Apart from one little oversight, these little wells where the uh, rubber spacers sit in, they just kind of filled in with tea. So I wish I modeled the hole so that they just drain easier. Now let's move to the top where the fan sits, this cover up here, just comes off like so and the fan is actually just held in place by these uh, four little pillars. I thought I was gonna have to screw it down but no there's no need. It just holds in place and if I ever need to swap it out it's as easy as just pulling it off. Before I show you the rest of the electronics I have to point out one of my design blunders. Uh, you've probably already noticed this power jack does not look like it belongs here. Yeah, so I designed this beautiful uh, backplate with the Vestagons and then I was like, ah crap, I have to put power in here somehow. So I kind of carved out a little bit of a space here just to have this jack sticking out. Inside here, things are somewhat self-explanatory. First of all, we've got the power going in. I'm using a 24 volt 3 amp power supply and that goes to these two relays. This one is for the fan, this one is for the bed. The bed draws about 2.4 amps when it's running, so I'm still well within the limit. Uh, then we've got another wire going up here to the uh, step-down converter, which converts the 24 volts to five volts for the microcontroller. And as you can tell, I'm no longer using an Arduino. I'm using the uh, Fire Beetle too, uh, which DF Robot it fixed that issue I had with the library in like under a day. So I woke up the next day to an email and they're like, we fixed it, we pushed an update, check it out. And yeah, it worked perfectly. So yeah, down here we've got the temperature sensor and we've got the uh, IR sensor. This white wire here is for the thermometer that's built into the bed. And I've got that connected to one of the analog input pins on the uh, Fire Beetle. And what that lets me do is just check the temperature of the bed and if it gets to 100 degrees it turns itself off so it ends up kind of ping-ponging on and off constantly because it's constantly like I'm too hot, I'm too cold, I'm too hot, I'm too cold. Uh, it keeps it at a consistent 100 degrees which keeps my tea pretty warm. Everything in here is held in place with hot glue which will make it much easier for me to replace this relay. I now understand why 3D printers use MOSFETs instead of relays. This little guy clicks constantly.
And I did go back and check, DF Robot does sell MOSFETs with basically the same pinout as this relay and for exactly the same price. I don't feel like I need to replace the relay for the fan because it rarely ever comes on, only when the tea is like super hot and then it only clicks on for like, I don't know, 20 minutes and then turns off. Uh, so nowhere near as clicky as this little guy. And I will change him into a MOSFET at my nearest convenience. There is actually one thing I want to add to this. It needs an indicator LED because sometimes I have no idea what the temperature of the T is. So I might either put in like a little RGB LED in here or maybe like a little OLED screen that just tells me the temperature. Uh, and that would kind of be it. So with that, I wanna say a huge thank you to DF Robot for sending me the parts for this. I don't have any kind of like affiliate links or anything. So if you guys can just let them know that you enjoy what I do here by just leaving nice comments and stuff like that. Uh, and hopefully they'll support me even more. If you wanna build this yourself for some reason, the links for all the parts and the 3D files are right below the like and subscribe button. Hint, hint. And I'll see you on next week's live stream. Toodaloo. Literally years of drinking tea and I still can't figure it out.